Hey everyone, it's Jeremy and this is my ball python Charles. Today, I want to talk to you guys about some animals that I really have no interest in keeping as a pet anytime in the foreseeable future. Please understand, I have nothing really negative to say about these animals, or really any animals. These are just animals that I personally don't have any interest in keeping as a pet. If you do like these animals that are on my list, or if you have some of these animals, or if you have interest in keeping these animals, then that's absolutely fine. I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't get them. I'm just not interested in getting them myself. This video is part of a series that I'm doing on my channel right now. It is a series that several other animal YouTubers have done, including Tyler Ruggy, Pickles Pets, Emma Lynn Sampson, BB's Beasties, and many others. In this series, there's going to be several videos, including the video that I've already done, which is animals I'd like to keep someday, this video, which is animals I have no interest in keeping, and then additional videos such as animals that I don't believe should be pets, and animals that I'd never keep again. And we'll see if I manage to fit any other videos into this series as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this video. The very first animal on my list is iguanas. And this is for several reasons, but overall I just feel like they don't make good pets. As they grow, they require a huge enclosure with a lot of space, and oftentimes they actually become very aggressive and mean as they mature. Green iguanas can get very big, including their tail. They can reach lengths of up to five or even six feet long in some cases. And they like to use that tail as a weapon. They will whip you with it without a second thought, and that will hurt. In general, I feel like iguanas probably make terrible pets for most people. I know there are some people in the pet community who keep iguanas. Uh, even here on YouTube, there's a few people that keep iguanas and they keep them correctly and happily. But for most people, I think iguanas are just a terrible pet, myself included. I live in a condo, I am limited on space, and I don't really have the space to house a six foot long, aggressive arboreal lizard in my condo. Number two on my list are colubrids. Now, I'm not necessarily saying all colubrids because I am interested in hognose snakes, but most colubrids I'm really not interested in, such as milk snakes, corn snakes, Mexican black king snakes, garter snakes. I'm just really not interested in keeping colubrids, and there's a few reasons for that. One being that I just think constrictors, such as ball pythons, are a lot easier to handle than colubrids are. Colubrids are very flighty and very fast. They can get away from you very quickly, whereas a constrictor is a little bit slower moving and that makes them a little bit easier to control when you are handling them. Now that being said, there are some constrictors that I'm going to discuss a little later in the video that I have no interest in keeping, but for the most part, I'm more interested in constrictors than colubrids. I don't personally really have any interest in keeping any colubrids, especially any colubrids that are really small and fast moving. They can easily escape, easily get away. They're harder to hold on to. Even though a colubrid's care requirements are in general easier than a constrictor's care requirements, I just think constrictors are easier to handle and for that reason, I'm more interested in keeping more constrictors than colubrids. Of course, there are exceptions to this. I am interested in keeping a hognose snake at some point, and also a Kenyan sand boa, but I'm just really not interested in any fast-moving snake that can get away from me. Next on my list is giant snakes. Now, I did say I'm more interested in constrictors than colubrids, but there's a limit on that. I don't want anything that's going to get massive, such as a reticulated python or a green anaconda, for example. Those snakes are just way too big. I don't even think I'm interested in a Burmese python, honestly. Now, I am interested in something like a boa constrictor, like I said in my last video, but I'm really not interested in any snake that gets to be like 13, 15, 20 feet long. No, that's just not my thing. Not only do I not have the space for it, but also I live alone. I don't have anyone that lives with me or is always around that can be there when I take a giant snake out. And so I just don't think it would be a very bright idea. The next kind of animal that I really have no interest in keeping is actually venomous snakes. I'm not saying like something that's mildly venomous, like a hognose snake. Obviously, I have said several times that yes, I am interested in a hognose snake. However, I'm talking about things like rattlesnakes, vipers, cobras. I'm just not interested in keeping any kind of snake that contains a deadly venom and could kill me, or at the very least, send me to the hospital. Oh. 
I hope I got that on camera. He just gave me a big yawn. Next animal that I have no interest in keeping is a monitor lizard. Again, I know there are people in the community who keep monitor lizards, and I'm not trying to shame them or tell them that they shouldn't. If you keep monitor lizards, or if you like monitor lizards, then that's absolutely fine. I just have no interest in them myself. Again, just like with iguanas, monitor lizards grow to be very large, and they can also be very aggressive. And also, some monitor lizards can even be venomous, and so for me, that's yet another reason that I would never want to keep one. And yes, I know there are some monitor lizards that stay smaller, like the Aki monitor, for example, but I don't even really have interest in keeping one of those, honestly. Next animal that I have absolutely no interest in keeping is an animal that I know a lot of people in the pet community do keep. And it's actually two animals, but I'm grouping them together for the same exact reasons, and that is a Pac-Man frog or Chubby frog. Now, I'm not saying that I don't think these frogs are stinking adorable, because they are. But I am saying I don't think that they make very exciting pets. Pac-Man frogs and chubby frogs both pretty much spend most of their time sitting in a hole waiting for food. They don't really do anything. They eat a lot of food. They require a lot of humidity. And they just don't seem like a very rewarding pet to keep. Yeah, chubby frogs are stinking adorable. I agree. And yeah, Pac-Man frogs come in all sorts of amazing, incredible colors, and they are really cool looking. But I feel like you never see them because they're always in their hole. And I'm not trying to say I'll never get one because who knows, maybe sometime in the future I'll change my mind. But as of right now, just because they are so, I hate to say it, but boring, I have no interest in keeping one. Up next on my list is another one that a lot of people I'm sure are going to disagree with, and that is horses. I'm not saying that I don't love horses, because I absolutely do. But again, I live in a condo. I don't own any land, let alone enough land to keep a horse. And I know you can get a horse and keep it at a ranch. There's a lot of people that do that. But honestly, I don't really want to do that. I don't really like to leave home, like, ever. So if I were to own a horse and keep it off-site somewhere. I feel like I would never visit it because it's not at my house. Also, I've never ridden a horse. Now, I am interested in riding a horse sometime, but just because I'm interested in riding a horse doesn't mean I need to buy a horse. There are plenty of facilities that I could go to to ride a horse without having to purchase a horse. In addition to that, horses are just really expensive to take care of, and if you don't keep the horse on your own property, you have to pay boarding fees and pay a rancher to take care of it. And I'm just not interested in that. Sorry. Now that being said, if you own a horse and you want me to come over and visit your horse, I'm all about that. I will do that. The next animal on my list is also on my list because I don't own any land, and that is a sulcata tortoise. I love sulcata tortoises. They are amazing creatures, but because I don't have any land, I don't have a yard for it to go out and graze in, it doesn't make sense for me to keep a sulcata tortoise. Sulcatas are the largest tortoise in the world, and they require a lot of space outside. If you try to keep one indoors, you're going to end up with a lot of holes in your walls and a lot of chewed up carpet. But again, like with the horses, if you have a sulcata tortoise, invite me over. I want to come visit your tortoise. Next on my list is monster fish. Now there is a whole genre of fish keeping channels that keep monster fish. And I'm not here to shame them at all. But I am saying I have no interest in keeping monster fish myself. We're talking about things like red tail catfish and bass and gar and sturgeon. I just don't have the room for something like that in my condo. And even when I do eventually move to a bigger place, I don't really want to dedicate that much space to fish. A lot of these fish you have to keep in a pond, or if you do keep them indoors, in something like a pool pond. Again though, I'm not shaming anyone who does this, it's just not for me. A lot of these fish are just unreasonable to keep in something like an aquarium, and that just won't work for me. I do think they're amazing animals, and I do love to see them, but I don't love to see them so much that I have to see them every single day because I don't have the space to reasonably keep them in my condo. 
Also, they eat a lot of food, and I'm just not really interested in spending that much on fish food. Next on my list, and this is going to surprise a lot of people, is small dogs. Now, I love dogs. Don't get me wrong. I have a dog, but my dog is a big dog. And I like big dogs. I like dogs that I can cuddle with. I like to say I like dogs I can wrestle with, even though I don't really wrestle with them. But I'm honestly not a fan of dogs that yip instead of bark. And especially the ones who do it incessantly. I'm talking about dogs like Pomeranians, and Rat Terriers, and Chihuahuas, and Shih Tzus. They're just not for me. I've often joked that those small dogs aren't even really dogs. And if you're going to get something that size, then you might as well just get a cat. And the last animal on my list today... Oh, really, Charles? Oh. Oh. And last on my list of animals I have no interest in keeping is actually centipedes. And that may be a surprise to many people who watch my channel, because I do enjoy keeping millipedes. And centipedes are somewhat similar, however, they're different in the sense that they are actually highly venomous. And as I said before in this video, I really don't have any interest in keeping any highly venomous animals. If a centipede bites you, you're going to the hospital. Now I do think they're very cool looking, and they're very interesting animals, but I just don't personally have any interest in keeping them. And again, I know there are people in the pet community who keep them and enjoy keeping them. I just don't see myself being one of those people. Well, there you have it. That is my list of animals that I personally have no interest in keeping. Again, if you keep one of these animals, I'm not here to say anything bad about you or your pets. I'm just saying that I don't personally want to keep them myself. They're not for me. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do or how to live your life. This is just how I want to live mine. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that way you get notified when I upload a new video. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.